It is the WEBO Morning Show with Dave and Lou. And joining us this morning, Lou, a very special guest on the WEBO Morning Show. We'd like to say good morning to New York Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on your show again. Thank you for coming on the morning show again. We're always pleased to have you here. And uh, what a time it is to have you here. Well, these are unprecedented, extraordinary times that are calling on all of us as Americans to sacrifice in the short term in the longer term goal of literally saving lives. And so I thank all of your listeners for what they've had to do. Life, life has been disruptive in ways that we never could have foreseen, but I believe that our residents are rising to the occasion and collectively we'll get through this together. I think people are being a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, they're being creative. They're finding finding ways of helping each other. They're reaching out. We're hearing a lot of conversations where neighborhoods are getting together on their front porches and talking and, and getting out and walking and stuff. And that's that's one of the biggest things is to get, to maintain your social uh, your social life with social distancing as, as a primary concern. You're absolutely right. And what we're talking about, when we say social distancing, we're really talking about physical distancing. Right. If you want to take a walk in a park, and I've been out to parks and I've seen more families than I ever did before, which I think is beautiful. I love the fact that families are working together, get their kids out in the fresh air and, and exercise, but just don't walk close to each other. I was really disturbed the other day when I was taking a walk in a park and uh, saw a, a family get out of a car with their, their mom or grandma, and she had a walker, and they are you know, getting her fresh air because they care about her. But if they really loved her, they wouldn't have put her in the car with all those people that's who yeah. possibly could have contaminated her. So that that's the hard part. The people we love the most who may be on their own already, like my, my dad lives alone in Florida. He's 83, and he's telling me every day what the different frozen dinner he's going to have because he can't go out. And, yeah, I, it breaks my heart that I can't yeah. be there to take care of him. But we, we can't do that because our, our seniors are vulnerable. We're also now seeing more cases with younger people so they need to know that they are not immune but you you are so correct that this is the time when people are being creative facetiming and having virtual dinner parties and and virtual dance parties and you know the the uh the creativity of the american spirit is just unbelievable it's been tested but we always shine and we will rise to this occasion so the neighborhood uh, the neighborly uh, outreach is so important. I continue to make extra food in my pot of my crock pot or my oven when I'm home and share it with older neighbors who I'd rather not see in the grocery stores. I'd rather bring them their food uh, wrapped up in uh, nice sterile packaging. But you know, you know, just let just let people just change their lifestyle for a, sh a little while. Uh, it's going to be a few weeks, perhaps months, but in the scheme of life, it is a short time, and and the rewards far out far outweigh. Uh, the, the inconveniences because we're talking about quality of life and protecting human life. The answer is simple. It's a simple solution. Just stay home. Yes. Yes. And, I, you I, know, I, when we live in, in more rural areas, it's actually a lot easier. You know, we yeah. live separately. You, if you have a house or, you know, you, you're more likely to be able to just pull in your driveway and go in the house. And, you know, you can have slight social isolation from other people and like I said stay connected and, and call people on the phone and use video conferencing but imagine living in New York City where people thousands of people live in one public housing building and they all have to use the same elevator uh, uh, so yeah we, you know, we are fortunate but it, in, in upstate but it's also no surprise that the epicenter of this epidemic globally is New York City just on the, on the on the population in itself the population, the, I mean, people are being told to go out to parks. There are so many people, if they go to parks and stand shoulder to shoulder, they're not social distancing, no. but they're crowded. No. So the struggles are great there. So I think in parts of the state that are having to deal with that intense proximity to other people, you know, we, we should just take a breath and, and you know, relax and say we're going to get through this. But the other thing I want to urge people to do is please support your local businesses that are still open, the restaurants, uh, the takeout, the delivery. We've got to keep them alive because they are the heart and soul of our downtowns. They give it, give us the local flavor. And that's part of why I love upstate and our smaller communities and our smaller counties. They have such charm, but they're going to need our help. And the governor and I are working very hard to help people with getting through their unemployment checks and making sure that we get some direct money into the hands of small businesses and families to get them through this. And we're looking to Washington 
to come up with a, a package that is going to respond to that need immediately, not just big corporations with no strings attached. That doesn't work so well. We have to get it in the hands of our citizens and our small businesses immediately, and that's what we're fighting for as well. That is 100% the area you're talking to right now. I mean, without small businesses, this would just be a, a pasture. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, uh, I think everyone's a little frightened. Uh, it's very uncertain. Uh, so many small business owners not really sure what to do. Um, we've had one restaurant who's opted not to do curbside pickup or takeout and just said, you know what, we're going to shut down with everybody else. The others have sort of reinvented themselves. They're doing maybe 20% the business, 30% the business they were before. Uh, so they are open, but it is a a gigantic hit. It is a huge hit, and we are very sensitive to that. Our, our priority has been to build up our capacity in our hospitals and our healthcare system because, as the governor has said on his daily briefings, he's been so transparent and, and open with the public and letting them know exactly what he knows, when he knows it. He has been warning about this for weeks and building up capacity to have more ICUs and ventilators and masks and gowns. That has been really a, a you know, laser focus of ours to make sure that that occurs. But simultaneously, we are not losing sight of the, the pain that these shutdowns are causing our, our everyday citizens. And whether it's a small business or someone who had a job that they've been laid off and the employer can't afford to pay them any longer, or someone was in this gig economy where they don't even get unemployment benefits, someone who might have been working from home, working remotely, or um, there's just a lot of people that are affected in different ways. But I think we just can't give up hope, though. That's that's That would be the bigger enemy if we give up hope and become isolated and let the fear and, and anguish settle in because that takes you down. It, it uh, affects your ability to be resilient and to deal with the everyday stresses that are coming. So I know what it's like to have little kids at home, just even for summer vacations when I was a mom. Sometimes it's stressful. The thought of having kids home now when you may be trying to work from home yeah or have a new baby or, or teenagers that might be uh, not getting along. It, it's it's a challenge, but you know people should embrace this. When else in your life are you gonna have that much time to build your family relationships in a way that they'll be talking about forever? Sitting around the dinner table in 20 or 30 years, uh, families are gonna talk about this. And this is a time for, for parents to hang in there, it's tough, but also to teach your children life's lessons about how you deal with adversity and how you get through things and, and, and build closer bonds with your friends and your neighbors or people you haven't talked to in 25 years. Yeah. Give them a call. Mm -hmm. Check in. How's, how's everybody doing? <clears throat> so this is an extraordinary time. It could be extraordinarily negative or we could turn it into a positive. And I think that's what New Yorkers will do. Well, we have to reassure everyone. And that, you know, when we talk to them on the phone, we do it through social media. We do it from across the street in our neighborhoods. Uh, checking with the the elderly people and making sure everybody's doing fine, uh, you know that that's all part of being a community. It's all part of our our social our social structure. I was talking with my daughter, our daughter who lives in Tennessee, and she has two children. I says, Hannah, have that develop a journal, put a journal together of what you guys did and what's going on because one day when the kids get older, this is going to be a chapter in a history book. And they you can talk so real right time. That. They can talk real time about what happened and relate to things like that. And it's like you say, so important for people when they're getting together and the things that you can do, the things that, you know, closets are getting cleaned out, you know, painting projects are getting done, uh, all kinds of neat things. So right. it's all good. Right. And, and don't let it overwhelm you. Oh, no, and, no, no. You take one day at a time and say, uh, as my mother used to say uh, before we lost her a few years ago, she say, this too shall pass. Yep, that's and right. It, it will pass, and it doesn't seem like there's light at the end of the tunnel because we can't declare that this is over yet. We may not have seen the worst. In fact, I'm sure we have not seen the worst in terms of the numbers of people being affected, testing positive, showing up in hospitals, which aren't crowded yet, soon will be overflowing. Uh, we're going to go through some tough times, but... You know, bring out the images of uh, your grandparents and great parents in the in the Great Depression. Oh, that yeah. went on much longer. My grandmother, with eight children at home, got had to go work at the Bell Aerospace plant and help make airplane parts as part of the war effort. Mm -hmm. This is our war effort, and our war effort is being told to stay home. We're not being told to have to go 
to factories or to go stand in bread lines or go fight a foreign war. Uh, we're being told to stay close to your families and take care of yourself and others. And I think we can rise to that occasion. I, I, for one, am very confident that the, the people that we have uh, working on these uh, this, this issue to get a cure, to get a, uh, a solution to it, they will handle it and handle it well. And we just have to continue to have that, that continual promise of hope. Keep, keep the faith, and uh, we are going to have stories to tell when this is all finished that uh, we never could have imagined. But uh, you're right about the sense of community, especially in our small towns. I mean, this is an opportunity. Uh, put out your flag, uh, you know, talk to each other, call, socialize, and, uh, and, and, and be the better person that's always been within you. This is your opportunity. Right on. Bizarre times indeed, but we're all in the same boat together, and we will come out of it all together. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul from the state of New York, thank you so much for joining us on the WEBO Morning Show. I know you're very busy right now. We appreciate you taking the time to join us for a few minutes. Well, thank you very much, and everybody hang in there and stay, stay well. Bye-bye.